So now that we know the three parts that make up a variable, we're actually going to use this knowledge to start creating our own variables within our programs. So I'm going to go over this generally, and we can look at the code later. But the important thing is to understand how it actually works. Now, when I say creating our own variables, what I really mean is we're going to be defining a brand new keyword to add to the C-sharp dictionary. So we know that C-sharp already previously has um, keywords that it recognizes. So when we start typing them in, we won't get any errors when we try to compile. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding to that dictionary so when we try to compile, it won't actually break anything. It'll actually find what it's expecting to find. So we're going to start this off by um, trying to figure out uh, how we're going to use those three components of a variable to actually do this. So the basic syntax or the basic grammar of creating a variable is actually pretty simple. What it needs, first of all, is the type, which we discussed. We talked about five different types of data, or data types. Following the type, it needs an identifier, something to call the variable. We talked about the different rules and naming and whatnot uh, of how the, how the identifier must be used. Um, so let's do a quick little example. Let's say, for example, I wanted to create a variable to hold somebody's name. So let's say the user's name. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to decide what type of data I'm going to use. Well, the type of data I'm going to use in this case has to be able to hold text. And the only type of data that I have that does that is a string. Let's write an example here. So we have a string. The next thing I need is an identifier. I need that name that will actually be unique and follow all the naming conventions. So if I'm trying to store the user's name, I want to keep it simple and clean, I'm going to actually use the variable username. The, sorry, the identifier username. So I'm going to write user. I'm going to use camel case. Username. And now I'm just going to end off my statement with a semicolon. So what I've done here is I essentially defined a new keyword. And the way this actually works is if the computer stores memory like this, this is just a way to visualize the, the uh, actual methodology behind it. But if the computer stores this, consider each one of these like a bucket, like we talked about before. And some types of data use more buckets than others. Uh, let's say, for example, a string uses two buckets. So what happens when we run this line of code, this string username, what's actually occurring is that we are asking the computer to reserve enough space to store a string. Think of it more like a parking lot. So in a parking lot there can be reserved parking spaces and sometimes they're full and sometimes they're not full. This is really the same idea. We're going to reserve a space for future data, data that we haven't yet put in there. So what actually happens is it finds the first, uh, first block of memory that is big enough that it's actually not used up um, to actually store this data. So let's say, for example, it uses up the first two blocks. And what it does is it uses that identifier to name those two blocks. So in this case, whenever we're trying to use username, it's going to reference these two blocks. So let's say, for example, um, it holds the value Steve. And if we were to ever try and output that, maybe we did something like this. Console dot write line. username. How does this actually work? Well, what actually occurs is that, remember we read our statements from right to left, and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to try and evaluate these brackets. And inside these brackets, it's looking for the value that's uh, at username. So what it does is it just does basic math class stuff, substitution. It sees that this is a keyword in the C-sharp dictionary, but it needs to know what that word represents. So it jumps over to memory and looks for the blocks that are reserved with the name username. It says, oh, I need that data. What is currently stored in the blocks at username? Oh, well, it's Steve. So what it does is it comes back here and literally substitutes the value Steve here. And then it will continue executing that line of code. So we console.write line Steve. Now we'll never actually see Steve. We see the variable there as programmers. So what we see here is we have the ability to reserve, store, and then access the data stored in this variable. Now we can do that with any other type of variable, um, whether that is an integer, we'd say int, let's say user age. 
again we can just store or we could just reserve those values and um, sorry we can just reserve the location and store whatever data we want inside of user age so that is how to define a variable